guys, so I decided that today I wanted to talk about books that I don't want to read. We all have these books that we're just like, hear so much about them, and they're hyped, and they're hyped, and they're hyped, and then we're like, ugh. I just can't do it, I don't want to do it, I don't want to read it, or the cover is just ugly as all hell, and we're just like, ugh, do not want on that bookshelf, no. Or we just, you know, haven't gotten around to it and we just can't be bothered. So I have a list here of mine that I want to talk about, and I realize that these are all books that I don't want to read, but I probably should. So these are all books that have either been huge in the YA market or huge in the history of books or just generally books that every human being should read. So um, if you've read any of them, I would love to hear your comments because I need somebody to convince me to read these books. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. The first book on my list is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. You guys have heard me talk about this before. I just don't want to read it, oh my god. I didn't want to read Twilight when it came out either, and I did, and I regretted it, because I wasn't a fish, nah. I'm a Buffy fan, and so my brain couldn't grasp the different kinds of vampire, and so I'm kind of worried about that with the host. I've heard things about it that are better than Twilight, but I've also heard those things from people who liked Twilight. So. I want to hear from someone who didn't like Twilight, but did like The Host. So if any of you guys fall into that category, I would love to hear what you have to say. I'd also love to hear what any of you have to say, even if you did like Twilight, or if you didn't like Twilight or The Host. I would love to hear what you have to say, because I need someone to sway me one direction or the other on this one. The second thing on my list is the Mortal Instruments series. I know, I haven't read them, and I'm... I should be shamed. You should shun me. Shun the non-believer. But yeah, I haven't read them. I started uh, City of Bones once. And I got in like a page, and then I returned to the bookstore because I didn't want it. I did not want it in my life. But this was like over a year ago. So I have, that, since then, I have softened to YA a lot. And I'm curious what people think. Um, should I go ahead and read it, or is it just not worth my time? The same for the Infernal Devices series. I've heard that it's a little bit better than Mortal Instruments, but I would still like a second opinion on those, because I want to know what I should be reading. Should I read Mortal Instruments before the Infernal Devices, or can I read the Infernal Devices without having read the Mortal Instruments? Warm Bodies by Isaac Marion. I don't want to read this book, because Isaac Marion has been kind of a douche about the whole young adult thing. His Twitter feed, I, I, I follow him on Twitter because I was like, oh, I should read this book, and look, he has Twitter, and it's cool, and, and, you know, zombies, I like zombies, so I followed him, and since then I have seen some very questionable things on his Twitter about how he doesn't think that being a YA author is a good thing. He's dissing his fan base, and I'm just, I'm appalled that an author of such a apparently very good book and with a good movie, would say something like that about the people who make this possible for him, and it's just, it just baffles me. And I've seen so many things about how he's bashing YA as a genre, and how people shouldn't read YA because it's just a bunch of, like, completely thoughtless crap that doesn't have plot, or doesn't have meaning to it, and I, I just, like, this hurts my soul, because I'm, I'm a YA writer, I'm not, a, I'm not published, I'm not an author like him, but you know, I strive to be that. I strive to be a YA author. I don't strive to write Catcher in the Rye. I don't strive to write Perks of Being a Wallflower. I strive to write something that can sit on the shelves next to, you know, Harry Potter or something like that. And I find that his attitude about YA is just appalling. So I have been hesitant to pick up his book, mainly because I don't want to give him money. But I will do it if you guys think I should. If any of you guys have anything nice to say about Isaac Marion, I'd really like to hear that because I feel like I need some positivity here. Ooh, you guys are gonna, um, hurt me for this one. Chronicles of Narnia. I read Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, liked it okay, but it wasn't my favorite thing in the world, and I definitely saw the biblical references to it. And in it, the, the, the whole Bible stuff I know is in there, and it just, that turns me off so much because anything that has a preachy message just kind of, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. I don't want to read a book that's going to be like, and now the moral of the story is, you should believe in God. Because my opinion, I mean, I, it doesn't matter what it is, because everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And my opinion is that everyone is allowed to believe whatever they want to believe, because what matters about belief is how it makes you a better person. And so for me, it makes me a better person to believe what I believe. I'm not going to go into it, because we don't have all day, and 
I don't feel like having any arguments with you guys because I love you guys and I don't think religion should be brought into it because it tends to bring up crazy things. So I have a problem with books based on religion in terms of like the preachy aspect. I don't have a problem with a book that draws on mythology or that draws on a certain Bible story that's like a retelling or something. That doesn't bother me, but in this case with the whole the lion is Jesus and you know it's just uh does it get more preachy or less preachy? Is it really obvious in the other books? Are the other books worth reading? Is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe really the only one that's like, really, you have to read that, I, you know? Basically everything except for The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I read The Fault in Our Stars and I loved it and I'm afraid that if I want to like go ahead and read his other books, they're not going to be as good. And I don't want to ruin the facade for myself. So I want to know what you guys think of John Green's other books. So like Paper Towns, Looking for Alaska. If you guys have thoughts on any of those books, I would love to hear that because I'm afraid to read his other ones. So the last book on my list, I would not be surprised if you guys flay me alive for this one. I would flay myself alive for this one, especially considering my username here. I have not read The Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know. When I was a kid, I read The Hobbit. I was like 10 years old and it was my favorite book second only to Jane Eyre. Those were like the two top books of my entire life. They changed the, like everything in my life. They changed the way I read books. They actually made me read books. And so when I was a kid I wanted to be a hobbit. I basically am a hobbit. I'm... I live in a hole and I, I'm four foot eleven so I'm extra short. Although not nearly as short as I would have to be to be a hobbit. I loved The Hobbit growing up. I still love The Hobbit. It's one of my favorite books of all time. It's so whimsical and like adventurous and I just, it's so lighthearted and it makes me happy. It makes me smile when I read it. And I love that in a book, a book that makes me smile as I read. But when I came down to it and I decided to read The Lord of the Rings several years later when I had grown up quite a bit and seen the movies, loved them, I sat down to read Fellowship of the Ring and I got through about half of it, I got to the Council of Elrond and I put it down. I could not do it. It was so dull and dreary and on and on about this elk and these plates and where they came from and who they belonged to and all the 800 million people who had eaten off of them before and what they had eaten and it was just like, oh good lord, why is this important? Shoot me now. Like I couldn't do it. And I feel that way about them now still. I was only 16 when I tried to read them and so I understand that maybe I was too young. But even so, I'm not sure I could do it now either, and I'm hesitant to pick them up again. But I know I should read them because, I mean, for someone who proclaims to be a fan of Tolkien's world and hobbits, I should have read The Lord of the Rings because that's a big part of that world. And a big part of why I love the series and why I love the franchise is because of the movies. And so you'd think I would like the books to go along with it, right? But I don't know. I mean, I know that as a huge fan of other franchises like Harry Potter, if somebody told me, oh, I love Harry Potter, and I'd be like, oh, which book is your favorite? And they're like, oh, I haven't read any of them, I've just seen the movies. I would be like, gone. Like, I would headbutt them and probably knock myself out, but it would be worth it because, oh my god, what is wrong with that person? You know, how can you be a fan of, a, like, a series or a franchise and not have, like, read the major thing in it? And it's just, it baffles me. So as someone looking from the outside in at my own life, I'm like, what is wrong with me that I haven't read The Lord of the Rings? Like, seriously, why haven't I done that yet? If you have any thoughts on any of the books I've talked about so far, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you could leave me a comment down below, we can have a conversation about them. I would also love for you guys to try to convince me to read certain books just because I need somebody to push me into it. So, write your comments below, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!